Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on random events. We have already spent some time examining the nature of probability. We are now going to discuss the basics of probability mechanics. If you are ready, let us begin. A subset of sample space is called an event. It is a collection of sample points that we gather into a single unit to make it easier to deal with. For example, we will take our old friend, the six-sided die. When we roll it onto the tabletop and it comes to rest, we would describe the events as the collection of sample points in the action. In this case, the possible events are one, two, three, four, five, and six. There are different kinds of events. A simple event contains just one sample point. If you were to flip a coin and it came up heads, that would be described as a simple event. When two or more sample points happen at the same time, it is described as a compound event. If you remember our exercise from the last class, we were rolling a die hoping that it came up an even number. We could call that a compound event since it included two, four, and six. I would like you to take a moment, students, to think of as many probability-based occurrences as you can. They could be simple like the fall of a card. They could be as sophisticated as the decaying of an isotope. Divide them into two categories, one of simple events and one of compound events. Please get started. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure you came up with some good examples. Almost anything can be divided up into simple and compound events if you try. Some of the most obvious examples of events are games. Card games and dice games are often based around pure chance. For example, if you are playing cards with friends, being dealt an ace is a simple event. You either get an ace or you do not. There is only one sample point. An example of a compound event is a sporting match, like football. It is not only a matter of which team wins or loses, but of how many goals are scored. Just to name a few options, the home team might win by three goals, win by two goals, tie the game, or lose by one goal. There are, of course, many more possible outcomes than this. Each of them is a sample point, which makes the football match a compound event. It is remarkable that something as complicated as the weather can be a simple event if you are only interested in whether it will rain. Sometimes an occurrence will have many possible outcomes. In that case, it helps to remember that all events are subsets of a given sample space. If we call the sample space S and the occurrence is made of elements which we can call M, then the sample space has 2 to the power of M subsets. Let us explore an example. If we are flipping a coin, then there are not many possibilities. Specifically, our sample space is equal to heads and tails. Therefore, if we consider the exhaustive number of events, there are four in total. Now, I would like for you to try. We will only consider the total number of events in this question, not the exhaustive number. Please list all of the events present in tossing a coin three times in a row. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. How well did you do with this exercise? The correct answer is that there are eight events in total. You might have found this answer by simply thinking of all the possibilities and making sure you did not repeat yourself. You also might have multiplied the subsets. You might have used a tree diagram, like this one. Flip a coin once, and there are two outcomes. Flip it twice, there are four outcomes. Flip it three times, and there are eight. If we were to flip four coins in a row, can you guess how many events there would be? That is correct. There would be 16 events. Good job. Students, it is important to note the difference between dependent and independent events. If we have two events called E1 and E2, the probability that the second event occurs given that the first event has already occurred is denoted this way. It is called the conditional probability of the second event given that the first event has already occurred. If the occurrence or non-occurrence of the first event does not affect the probability of the second event or if the two events are independent, then we express their relationship this way. We call this the multiplication rule of probability. That is all the time there is for today. We have begun to learn about the nature of random events and how we can use tree diagrams and tables to calculate possible outcomes. We have also learned about the multiplication rule of probability. Next lesson, we will be learning more about occurrences and non-occurrences. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.